Hey everyone, welcome to Happy. It's September and that's Paw Paw Festival time. Paw Paw is North America's largest native fruit. Check out our website for Paw Paw Festivals near you. I hope there is one near you. Stop by, check it out. But in this video, we're going to talk about a very common pest that occurs on pawpaw trees at this time of year. Not all pawpaw trees get it, by the way. It's a pest called the pawpaw web worm, and it's very easy to deal with if you get it early. We're gonna show you how we deal with it once a tree has it, how some trees don't have it. We'll show you what that critter looks like, and we're gonna show you how we eliminate it without using any insecticides. Welcome to Happy. Hey, wake up! <laughs> Tastes like mango, banana, hints of pineapple, depending on the plant. It's a fascinating plant, grows native in 26 U.S. states. Few people know about it. In this video, we're gonna talk about a very common pest that happens right now in August, September. There are about three insects that affect pawpaw trees. One insect works early in the year and attacks the pawpaw's flowers. One is too beautiful to be called a pest. And then there's the pawpaw webworm. It does its magic in August, towards the end of the growing season. The pawpaw webworm is very destructive. It can cause the entire pawpaw tree to look like this. So this is at the tip, and then it works its way down and the whole tree will end up looking like this. So the pawpaw webworm starts as a small moth, and it, that moth lays its eggs on the underside of older pawpaw leaves. The pawpaw webworm larvae, the caterpillars, crawl up to and start feeding at the upper ends of the branches, the tips, anything at the tip, that's where she starts. The insect is easily identifiable without seeing the caterpillar. What you have here is the dried leaves that have been pulled together. You have that silk webbing that's in there. And all up in there, if you can see, is small little, it's caterpillar poo, called frass. This is a telltale sign of the pawpaw webworm. Starts at the tip, does its little shelter thing, webbed silk, and lots of poo, the caterpillars inside there. The pawpaw webworm will make a pawpaw tree look dead, but they don't actually kill the tree. The webworm does its magic in August and early September. That's when the pawpaw tree's growth has ceased. So the damage to the tree, to the pawpaw tree, is limited. As far as I'm concerned, it really looks nasty. And the more leaves that this plant has, the better it can kind of prepare for winter, go through the photosynthesis process. No leaves, no photosynthesis. So I remove these pawpaw webworms as soon as I see them. At Hepi, we have seven cultivars, seven different pawpaw trees, and we have some wild colonies on this property. So my effort and my work is limited to that small amount of trees. Now, of course, if I had an acre of it, this would be, uh, tip pruning would be, uh, would take some time. Tip pruning is the key. As soon as you see this pawpaw webworm, what you wanna do is knock off the tip. Will it shorten your tree? Yeah, it does. But it's either shorten the tree or have it all look dead and just invite that colony to continue breeding on your property. And that's sort of a road to nowhere. And what I do is I throw the tips into a bucket, fill this bucket halfway up with water and put it in a sunny place out in the lawn away from my other edible plants. You want to make sure that you get the tip and any affected leaves, and you'll know that because that those leaves will have that silk webbing. 
You don't have to worry about the branches because this is not a borer type insect. This is right on the surface. So I'm gonna look for nodes that are pointing outward when I cut off the tips. This process will definitely shorten the tree. This is our Kentucky champion. And unfortunately, it gets affected quite a lot. So it's got a limited amount of push in the spring, a limited amount of new branches. And then she's getting uh, pruned back when I take the webworm off. The key is really tip pruning right away. That's what I didn't do here. I wanted to film this video. I wanted the lighting, blah, blah, blah. So I lost about two weeks. And what you'll notice is this critter would just go further and further down into your plant. Once she's crawled all over your plant, you want to look for like leaves like this, good looking leaf with a webbed dead leaf underneath it. That's the webworm's little hacienda right there. And whether or not I see any, I don't care. I'm going to take off these leaves too. So it's not just tip pruning, it's pruning to pruning whatever's got that web webbed action on it well that's it she doesn't look too bad does she here at happy we like to have air circulation in the center of the plant and kind of open and clear in the middle so we can get sunlight to the back branches and promote growth away from the sun as much as we want her to grow to the sun now I've taken off all the webworm action on this Kentucky champion and what I want to do now is monitor her over the next uh, couple of weeks there'll be a little bit more intrusion on this girl something I didn't see or catch uh, in my work today so monitor the pawpaw tree it is very likely that you'll see some uh, residual pawpaw webworm action coming back but it'll be very limited Cliff England is a trusted source. Pawpaw fanatics like myself know that name. You probably know that name too. Uh, he advocates uh, a product called Conserve. Conserve is an organic insecticide made out of yeast. So his recommendation, if you have scale, Cliff will have scale. Hepi is um, an exhibition garden, so we got a little bit of everything only seven cultivars of pawpaw and some wild colonies uh, but if i had acres and acres of it or limited time i would want to use a product called conserve again organic uh, insecticide it's uh, made out of yeast this is a jerry lehman pawpaw tree now she is right next to the kentucky champion she has zero webworms on her now i'll scour this tree to look for a single webbed leaf but looking at her she's uh pest free why the jerry lehman 20 30 also known as a jerry's big girl why this tree is unaffected and the Kentucky champion next to it is not affected. We're going to look at the Potomac and Susquehanna next. I don't know why one gets affected and the other one doesn't. Bugs have their thing. Historically, it's not unusual to have a little bit of pawpaw webworm on all our trees. This is the Neil Peterson uh, Potomac pawpaw tree. Again, web worm free tips are perfectly fine. All the tips looking really good. She's doing real good. Uh, these are relatively young trees. And anyways, a pawpaw web worm free. Right next to her is a Susquehanna. Oh, we got her as a really, really little tree. Now this is four pawpaw trees over, the fourth one over from the Kentucky Champion. But this is a little Susquehanna. We got it like with that much of a bud from Cliff England, by the way. Uh, thank you, Cliff. Webworm free. Now that would really suck if this little tree got slammed too hard by that webworm. That's why mitigating the webworm early on 
with a quick tip prune and staying on top of it allows that Susquehanna to keep her height and keep exploring upwards. Now this is our native stand of pawpaw. You see a little bit of tip uh, action, just the very tip. Now, we don't need her to grow so damn tall, so I'm gonna take her down a little bit. Now that's the beginning, beginning, beginning right there. See that? I mean, just right at the tip, right at the tip, folded leaves. I got webbing in here, and that's a shelter right there, if you can see. That's the shelter folded over and lots of poo. It's hot as hell, and I just want to get these webworms a new home. I'm going to give them a bath. Well, I had to get out of the sun. I hope it's not too dark in here, but this was the worst branch. This might be too dead. And they moved on. Oh, this is fresher leaves. And there she is right there. See them floating around in there? So that's what they look like. That's a little critter in there. Oops. They move pretty fast when they want to move. Wow, look at that. So I don't want to just taunt the little guy. There he is, outside of a leaf. Pretty grizzly looking little thing. Looks like that one won't get a bath. I was expecting to find a whole bunch of these in here, like loaded. There's one. Just gotta uncurl the leaves if you really want to look at the caterpillar. There ain't a whole bunch to look at, but that's what it is. You know, I don't know of any predator that eats this webworm so you know its primary job is basically to eat pawpaw leaves in August it makes a moth I'm not too sure what the moth does for local flora so we'll show you how we get rid of it in a humane ish way but without any pesticides Nice sunny location. So I just compact the leaves and fill this up halfway with water. After I turn off the camera, I'm going to angle this towards the sun. I don't see any evidence of anything climbing out. It's a quick process when you only have a handful of trees or even if you have more, things like spiders will get out, but that webworm really doesn't do much of anything. There's another spider. Spider's pretty good at crawling out, but the webworms aren't. I'm gonna try to rescue that spider. Where are you, dude? No insecticide, just poco agua. A little bit of water and that's about it please subscribe to our channel as we stand up this two acre exhibition garden it's all mostly down there with a little bit of upper garden action i need to go take care of some pawpaw webworms now the rest of them prolific a wells and a seed of cultivar which i'd never do again check out our web page on pawpaw that's happy.org forward slash pawpaw and learn all about this amazing fruit. Check out our festivals that's going on right now in September. That's happy.org forward slash pawpaw fest, I think. There's also links, anything pawpaw on my webpage, on my website, as uh, it will lead you to the festivals. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Even if you did like the video, smash that like button. I'm getting hot. <laughs> uh, please subscribe to our channel as we stand up this two acre exhibition garden. It's just been a real blast. We've targeted over 400 plants that we're going to try to squeeze onto this two acre 
uh, property and so far so good. We're doing a lot of squeezing and a lot of planting. Take care of yourself. Take care of someone else if you can. Love you. Bye. I'm on the trail of my secret pawpaw stash place out in the forest. No, I'm not going to tell you where it is. You got to look at some earlier videos. Cheesy videos, but you got to look at them earlier videos. I literally walked 30 feet from where I parked the car. We got a pawpaw here and she literally has to leave. The entire plant from above the view, she's maybe uh, seven, eight feet tall. The whole thing is stripped. Now she doesn't have a lot of leaves because right now we're in deep, like understory action right now. And a native pawpaw in a young one, eight feet tall, seven, eight feet tall, in full blown understory environment takes about 15 years before they have size and start fruiting but she is completely uh devoid of leaves except for those two there's one there and one there and a little guy over here no leaves at all let's go a little further down the trail okay so like another 30 feet forward i've got this what must be at least 18 foot tall pawpaw and she has just very little pawpaw webworm on her. I mean, this tip is completely free. I've got just to the side, a little bit of tip action on it. And of course, because of her size, she's mature enough, she's got some fruit on her. Let's check out the fruit. Now they're little. So we got that and some other little ones up in there. I'm parking this one at about 18 feet tall. She is an understory. She is in an understory type setting. There's a little bit of webworm right there. And other than that, she's webworm free. There's a young one. That one got slammed pretty good. You know, that shade of leaves, like we saw earlier in the video, that's going to have the webworm in there. There, look at the size of that one there, that trunk. Nice leafing, looking good. There's a hint as to where we are. Yeah, check out my earlier vids. Well, I hope you learned something about the pawpaw webworm and how it does its magic and its effect on trees. Please hit the like button. Whether or not you liked the video, hit that like button. Please subscribe to our channel as we stand up a two acre exhibition garden of 400 plus edible plants. Anything and everything that grows in zone seven. And I bet many of them grow in your zone. Take care of yourself. Take care of someone else if you can. Love you.